a book here, Doing What Jesus Did, a fresh look at the gifts of the Spirit by this lady. She's Dr. Reverend Alison Morgan and her husband, the Reverend Canon Roger Morgan, and they run this Matthias Trust. And she's written this book, which is a very, very good book. I'd recommend it, actually, uh, looking at the fresh gifts of the Spirit. But there's a lovely story in here. Um, I know Nigeria quite well. Um, and it uh, was given by Baroness Carolyn Cox, who is in the House of Lords. And she gave this uh, little talk, um, speaking at the New Wine uh, at, in August 2007. And it's called An Ordinary Miracle. It goes like this. And she's in Nigeria. Looking at those cars reminds me of what I can only call one of the many miracles we have experienced. In one of our visits to northern Nigeria, we were up in the north in Kaduna, and we had to get back to the capital Abuja that night. We had to get back for two reasons. First, because we were flying out on the cheapest kind of ticket, some of you might know, bucket shop tickets and in red all over them is stamped non-refundable, non-endorsable, non-transferable, non-everything. Almost non-useless ticket. And if you miss your plane, no other airline will pick up that bit of paper. Well, we had to get that plane, but also there was a debate in the Lords the next day on Africa. We wanted to bring the latest news from Nigeria our friends were running on African time. I'm not being critical, but I run it all the time. But it was 200 miles Kaduna Abuja, pretty empty road, not much between the 200 miles done. 100 miles to go, clock watching, nail biting, very tight on time. A car coming the other way flags us down. We get out to see why. Hearts sink. I'm no mechanic, but I know oil gushing out of rear wheel is not good news anywhere, least of all in the middle of the empty African bush. And not a soul in sight, and a plane to catch. Desperate prayer. Two minutes later, out of empty bush come two extremely competent young men. Size up the situation, open up the boot, get out the toolkit, that wheel is off. Fantastic, but naught for our comfort. As wheel comes off, wheel bearings all over the road. I'm no mechanic, but I do know you need wheel bearings to drive a car. Another desperate prayer. Two minutes later, out of that completely empty bush, comes a little lad, about 12 years old, with a black plastic bag. Out of black plastic bag, comes brand new set of wheel bearings <laughs> that would fit a Honda car. <laughs> In they go. On goes that wheel. Fantastic. Well, that's fine. But the bright young lads say, just drive the car a few yards and make sure that the other wheel's okay. Well, it wasn't. <laughs> wheel all over the road. Little lad comes back second time. Second set of wheel bearings fit Honda car. You know that car was on the road in 20 minutes, and I suggest to you that if your wheel bearings went in Shepton Mallet, there's no way you're going to get that car on the road in 20 minutes. But guardian angels come in wonderful forms, including little lads with black plastic bags with wheel bearings. Praise the Lord. We have a little motto in our organisation. We don't believe in miracles, we rely on them. Never take them for granted, but they happen when you need them. Yeah. It's a lovely story. I think it's a fantastic story. <laughs> I'd really recommend this book. I just asked Father Nicholas, you know, we're here, whether he could show us the process of how to pray and how he, how, in his healing ministry. Would you, could, you do, could you do that? Yes. Um, you can hear me. Yeah. <coughs> Um, in my book, I call it the section process. Um, I'll give you a fair example from the book. Um, the, the, 
I mentioned before the lady who was a retired teacher, and um, she she just been coming once a month, no problems. So we thought, and um, she was just leaving one day, and said so she was going to the swimming baths to learn to swim. I think I mentioned this this morning, didn't I? Yes. And um, I said, uh, why? They said, well, I would panic the water. I said, sit down. So she sat down, and I said, right, you're in the water, you're panicking. Just That's all right, okay. You know, feel you're panicking, you just feel it. I ask yourself, how old do you feel? She said, 18 months. So I said, where are you? I'm in the bath, taps are running, when we go to the front door, they ran in. So there's an ordinary reason why this child of 18 months is panicking. And this is healing of memories. Because Christ brought a memory back to be healed. And the memory was, she's 18 months old, in the bath. So I said to her, ask Jesus for his gift of forgiveness. For you. Help, help you to forgive your mother with his forgiveness. Help you to love your mother with you, his love, which he did. <coughs> now, I call this a process. And I've often wondered whether it's, could it be association of ideas? To, uh, talking about panic in the water, and she remembers she's in a bath. I think it's de definitely healing your memories. Okay. <coughs> um, the second one was, um, uh, 1976, 1976, what was special about 1976? August. Very hot. Okay. I was giving talks in the morning, talks in the evening, and seeing people in the afternoon. And in the afternoon, uh, that morning I'd give a talk on healing. And in the afternoon, two people came to see me, and the third one who came, um, the first thing he said was, Father, do you mind if I turn on the electric fire? So I said, carry on. She turned the fire on. She was cold. And um, we were talking about prayer. And in the middle of a sentence, she suddenly stopped and said, uh, that brown dress. I said, what brown dress? I said, well, when I was eight years old, my mother made me wear this brown dress to go to school in, and I hated wearing it. I wore my coat on top. So I said, well, if you hated wearing your brown dress, your mother made you wear, let's ask Jesus for his gift of forgiveness to forgive your mother for making you wear it. So with that sentence, she said, Jesus, I need your gift of forgiveness to forgive my mother with your forgiveness. I need your gift of love to love my mother with your love, okay? And uh, she went, and she wrote me a letter for filling four pages. And she said that she'd been to um, the swimming baths to, to swim, and she had swum a length. She hadn't swum before. She swum a length. Then she was teaching old ladies to dive in. Then she was um, being told by the instructors that there were people they knew would never be able to swim, even though they were teaching them to swim. And she was one of them. They couldn't understand how she was swimming. So you got the, um, the first one in the bath. Now, the, this, sorry, the second one is the 1976. She's cold. OK. So she went through the same two prayers. Jesus, help me. I, I need your gift of forgiveness to forgive my mother with your forgiveness. I need your gift of love to love my mother with your love. <coughs> and three months later, she came to see me. And she said, since that day I saw you, I haven't been cold. Now then, the 
process is, I get the person to tell me what the problem is, I tell them to feel the problem, and then ask them how old they feel. Now, I'm not certain if a um, psychiatrist would say it's an association of ideas. Could be. I think it's, it's definitely um, healing of memories. Because the, the, in the case of the 1976, she remembered the age of eight being cold at school and wearing a coat on top. And she had to have a reason for the teachers, for the children, for herself. Why was she wearing the coat? And the obvious answer was she was cold. So the body went cold until she was about 40. And then when, when she, uh, she realized there was no point, there was no reason for the body to be cold. Okay. <laughs> Now, you must remember that behind all this, there's a whole area of prayer. So there's a, the background of prayer. You've got the um, head teacher who panicked in water. You've got 1976. What was the third one? Um, communion. And after giving a talk on healing, the lady came to me and says, I just need a minute or two. I can't go to communion without feeling physically ill. <coughs> I said, OK. Um, and I asked her to feel what it was like <coughs> not being able to go to the communion rail to receive communion. And then she remembered she was two years old with somebody who was going to receive communion and the person take her down to the altar rails. And a lady down at the altar rails committed suicide and cut her throat. This child of two saw it happening. And that's the, remember, we had childhood trauma. This was a case of childhood trauma. So <coughs> I asked her to say this prayer, Jesus, and your gift of forgiveness for the lady who cut her throat. With your forgiveness, and your gift of love for the lady, with your love. <coughs> but you must always add, with your forgiveness and with your love. Because we don't do it, Jesus does it for us, okay? So can you see these are, these are examples of um, healing of memories? Now, there must be many, many people in the world today who've got small problems, like panicking in the water, feeling cold, whatever. I don't think any of them realize the problem can be solved with prayer. Um, see, most of, these, most of these people with problems, there's always a reason why the problem arose, and the, the problem arose early on in life, the age of 18 months, the age of eight. <coughs> I told you about the district nurse. This is another case. The district nurse came to see me about my legs, yeah. and she was complaining that she and her husband were very tired because um, their six-year-old son was keeping them awake every night with terrible nightmares from Christmas Day until March, every night with nightmares. And um, I didn't even know she was a Christian. I said to her, this is what you do. When he's asleep, you and your husband sit by him, hand on head, shoulder, arm, to say one sentence, Lord, we need some healing. And she came back next week and said, yes, he's only had two nightmares, and he himself said, nothing like the previous ones. Okay. <laughs> so can you see the process? You ask the person to feel the problem, and then you say, how old do you feel? And the age they tell you 
take you back to where it started from. Now then, this district nurse, she came out next week, he had no, he had two minor bears, nothing like the previous ones. Five weeks went by, no more nightmares. In the fifth week, she said to me, what he doesn't know, what you don't know, is that when he was two years old, I was washing the car, and he got lost. So presumably, at the age of two, he got lost, and something frightened him. And that fright was in him, at the age of two to six. Now, at the age of six, he had seen on television news jo Joanna Yates, remember the other name? Joanna Yates, she was a uh, landscape architect. She had been kidnapped and murdered in Bristol. And she was found <coughs> dead on Christmas Day. So the news on Christmas Day brought back the fear he had at the age of two. Now, I'm, I'm looking back at many of the people I've been to, I've told you, the problem has arisen somewhere back in their life, either 18 months, two years, six years, so on. So if you know somebody who has a problem, like I've just been saying, say to them, um, tell them to feel the problem, feel the panic in water, feel the cold or whatever it is, feel it and ask them, ask them to, to say how old they feel. And that will give you a clue as to where it started. So, can you see this, the correlation between the, the problem that they're feeling and the time when it seems to have started. There's another case which I can't remember at the moment.